Hello and welcome to another one of our TAC tutorial series here. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to actually scan a material. So once you've loaded in your material into the TAC 7 and we're ready to actually bring it into Pantora, these are the steps that you're going to need to use to be able to get a successful scan. So depending on the material that you're going to use, there are different uh, settings that we're going to go through. But for this one, we are going to use this blue diamond vinyl leather type of material here. And you'll be able to see that as we continue to work through it through not only this video, but some future videos. So in order to start, we'll go into the TAC7 tab and go to the start job. So the first step here is specify job where we are going to measure and post process. If for whatever reason we wanted to do multiple post processes, then we could do measurement only. So that way we can queue up multiple post processing. If we've already measured the material and for whatever reason we need to repost process, we can do that as well. But for this one, we are measuring and post processing. So I've labeled this here, tutorial underscore blue diamond vinyl. You can name it whatever you want. This is just my naming convention for organization. But once you have that, you can go ahead and hit next and it will bring you over to the processing options. For this one, it is a leather based material. So I'm hitting this category of leather. All of these, you're gonna get about the same options. Car paint is a little bit of a different beast, but for this type of textile or leather, whatever it is, we're gonna go under this. So we are gonna want displacement map because there is a little bit of, if I feel the texture here, you can actually feel that there is some height and displacement on, on the surface. So we're gonna to wanna to include that. The next characteristic is isotropic or anisotropic. I'm hitting anisotropic because there is a little bit of a shift when I rotate my uh, ma material here in front of me. There's a little bit of shift in color as I rotate that around. So anisotropic is what we're going to go with. For gloss, this has a little bit of a gloss to it. Um, if you're ever in doubt as to what setting you want to do on gloss, always go on the higher side. So I could potentially get away with a low gloss because there is just a little bit of gloss on this, but there's enough on it that I'm going to go with medium gloss. So if you're ever questioning between low or medium, go medium, medium or high, go with high. You're just going to get, you're just going to guarantee more detail. Um, it will take a little bit longer to process, but you know, you're going to get everything. Transparency is the next one. This material does not have any transparency, so it's not going to generate an alpha map. We don't need it. If we did need it, we would put in that clear plate inside the tax seven and but for this guy it doesn't have anything so we don't have to worry about that the next type is the brdf um so you can choose either ward or ggx ward is a little more universal but ggx is a little bit more detail and you get some more options with that so for our internal purposes here we are going to go with ggx but you go with whatever you need to go with Next one is Fresnel. Uh, this particular material has uniform Fresnel. It is all the same uh, across. It doesn't have any um, variation on the texture. So uniform we're going. Once you have all of your settings the way that you need it to be, you can go ahead and hit next and we're going to do a pre-scan. You hit pre-scan and it will do a simple picture of the material so that way you can actually select, as you can see here, I have selected where I want my region of interest to be or the ROI. So this is the area where we're gonna really be focusing that when it gets done with the measurement and post-processing, when we bring it into the editor, this area, whatever you've selected will be the uh, actual workspace that you're able to use. So you can rotate that around based on um, you know, if your material is not in exactly at right. So you can see here we're a little bit of an angle. So I just straightened it up a little bit by aligning it with how the patterning is there. And then you can manually enter in some, if you want every, all of your scans to be the same size, you can do that. Otherwise you can just manually go in and select and adjust depending on your material type. Once that is done, then you can hit next, which brings us into where you are actually going to be saving the files and all of the data and the AXF. So the first one will be the parent folder and you'll just hit browse and select where you want it to get saved out as. 
as well as the AXF file. You just hit browse and select where you want that to get saved. Once you're ready for that, then you hit start. I already did, but once you do, then you're gonna automatically get jumped over to the process tab where under here, it will show your material and it will start the actual process of measuring. So the TAC-7 machine will lock on you and so your material will be locked inside and it will start taking the pictures that it needs to do. Once it is done with that, then it will jump down to post-processing where it will start. The computer will take over and start actually processing all of the images that were taken, at which point you could start the whole process over again and start another job and get another set of measurements rolling. So the, the measurements will actually go quicker than the post-processing for the most part. So you'll have a queue up of this so you can keep rolling through your measurements there. But that's it for starting your actual job and how to scan a material. In the next video, we're gonna actually talk about what you do with after it's done post-processing. So I hope you stick around for that one and see you next time.